this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome today to That's a Great Question. God bless you today. I'm Pastor Tim Forstoff, and I pastor Cornerstone Church, and have done so for 37 years. And in those 37 years, people have come up to me before church, after church, during church, whatever, to ask me certain questions. Challenging questions, thought-provoking questions, biblical questions, doctrinal questions, cultural questions. I like to talk about one today that's been asked of me repeatedly for 37 years, and uh, I've preached on it, and I've shared outside the pulpit with people. I thought I would share it with you. The question is this, why don't you and your wife drink alcohol? My wife and I do not touch alcohol. We don't drink alcohol. We're not sipping saints. We don't have a sip here or drink there, and we haven't. Ever since we've been saved, and I've been saved since 1976. That's, that's a long time. That's 47 years. And I've pastored this church for 37 years. And alcohol does not touch my lips as a beverage. I have no trouble with alcohol as a medicine. Or even if you're at a certain place where they take alcohol as wine for communion service, no problem there. But it's just simply drinking it, social drinking, as a beverage. We don't drink, not at all. Let me tell you one of the reasons why. We got saved, my wife and I, at the same church, First Baptist Church in Centerville, Ohio, and the pastor there preached against drinking, called it a sin. We were both teenagers. We just bought into that hook, line, and sinker. Okay, it's sin. We're not going to touch it. Also, we became members of that church, and they had a covenant of membership. And part of that covenant of membership that you had to agree to and sign, it meant that you would abstain from all alcohol as a beverage. Well, we became members of that church, and we willingly signed that covenant. And while we were members down there, we never drank any type of alcohol, and we upheld that covenant. Well, I came up here in 1985, and I was immediately addressed this issue by people in the church. And I had to come up with good reasons why. We don't drink. And I'd like to share some of those reasons with you, all right? Number one, ask yourself these questions. Will drinking benefit me spiritually? All things are lawful for me, but, all, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify or build you up or are helpful spiritually. And I can truly answer that question, and I don't think alcohol as a beverage benefits you spiritually one bit. I've never missed it. I've never regretted my decision. Alcohol drinking would not benefit me spiritually at all. It will not enhance my devotions. It will not make me sharper. It will not make me more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. It won't benefit me in the least. Second question. Will drinking bring me into bondage? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me. But I will not be brought under the power of any. Anything that brings you into bondage becomes sin. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. God sets you free. Things of this world hold you captive. Years and years ago, I read a book written by a doctor, and it was titled Dying for a Drink. And that doctor made a very compelling case, based upon studies, that you can become an alcoholic off of one drink. He says there are certain people that have such a predisposition to addictive behavior that one drink hooks them for life. Of course, we have seen the destructiveness of alcohol in my wife's family, especially bondage, addiction. And I say stay away from it as far as you can. Number three, will drinking cause anyone to stumble? Listen to what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. But beware, lest somehow this liberty of yours, I have liberty to drink, all right, freedom to drink, this liberty of yours become a stumbling block or an offense to those who are weak. Well, I can truly say this, by not drinking, I'm not causing anybody to stumble. Nobody has to answer the question, well, you're a man of God, or you're a preacher, or you call yourself a Christian, why are you drinking? I don't have to answer that question, because I don't drink. Therefore, my behavior or choices, they're not causing anybody to stumble. It talks about the weak there. That's somebody that's weak in their faith, a fellow believer that's new in Christianity or weak in their faith. My decision to not drink won't cause them to stumble one bit. Number four, will drinking enhance my testimony? The Bible says we're the light of the world. Shine your light 
brightly. Will drinking enhance my testimony? I don't think so. I love telling people, you know what? I made a commitment to God years ago not to be a drinker. And in honor of the Lord and his consecration in my life, I've determined not to drink. I want to serve the Lord in this manner and put God at the highest place in my heart. I think not drinking enhances my testimony. I never have to apologize or explain why I do drink. And number five, will drinking bring glory to God? The Bible says whatever you do, listen, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Charles Spurgeon, the great English preacher, said this. He used to smoke cigars. And he smoked a certain brand of a cigar. And that cigar maker found out that Charles Spurgeon, this famous English preacher, smoked his brand of cigar. So they put up a billboard. And basically the billboard said this. Smoke the same cigar Charles Spurgeon smokes. Well, he got convicted and quit smoking that cigar. Because he realized he couldn't really do it to the glory of God. Well, I'm going to drink to God's glory. You know what? I can abstain to the glory of God. And I'm so happy about that decision. I tell my church all the time about the Nazarite vow that was given in the Old Testament that allowed the regular common Israelite to make a vow before God to show their consecration and dedication to the Lord at the highest level possible. And part of that Nazarite vow was to abstain from alcohol. In other words, to live at the highest level possible, you abstain from alcohol. I tell my church, I want to live at the highest level possible, and so I'm going to abstain from alcohol and give that discipline to the Lord. I will not touch it. I've never regretted it. That's why I don't drink. That's why my wife doesn't drink. And we thank the Lord for these choices. I hope that answers that question. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Next week, we're going to answer another great question. So please tune in. I'm Pastor Tim Forstaw. Thank you for joining me.